Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And the month of retrogression is going to start. Yes, there are three planets which will be retrograde during this month of May. One is Venus after 18 months. And then we have, as usual, the retrogression of Jupiter and Saturn. Right, so on 11, 12, 13, 14th, almost all the three are retrograde around that time. Okay, starting with Saturn, of course, and they will be retrograde for, for quite some time. And I have already made the retrogression video, so if you have not watched them, you can type retrogression and my channel's name, then you will find the videos. And apart from that, uh, Mercury is not retrograde, of course, Mercury will be retrograde later. Uh, the next month, I guess, and then Mars will be retrograde around September. So Mars and Mercury will not be retrograde, and these three will be retrograde that time. Okay, so if I check the transit chart of first May, it appears like this we have Leo is empty, Virgo is empty, Libra is empty, Scorpio is empty, and we have. Sagittarius with Ketu there and interestingly we have Jupiter who is not in Sagittarius he has moved to Capricorn for some time it's like a vacation time <laughs> and I'm not talking of the you know, Western astrology Capricorn and Eastern uh, Sagittarius no I'm talking as per Eastern Sidereal Jupiter is in two degree of Capricorn all right so it has happened last year also from Scorpio, it went to Sagittarius. Okay, so that's what I mean. And we have a hell lot of things going on in Capricorn, of course. <clears throat> in Capricorn, we have Pluto at zero degrees, zero, zero, three, three. And then we have Mars, we have Saturn, we have Jupiter, all right. So three planets as per Vedic Astrology and Pluto included four. Then Neptune is in Aquarius uh, and Pisces is empty. And of course, we have Sun, Uranus and Mercury in the sign of Aries. And Venus is in Taurus. Venus is in the last degree, 25 degrees, the last degrees of Taurus. And then we of course have Rahu in Gemini. And moon is in Ashlesha Nakshatra in Cancer. All right. So the prominent houses for this month is number one Capricorn, and then number two is Aries, and number three is Taurus. All right. These three are very, very, very crucial houses. And therefore, most of the focus of this month, the energies. Is in these houses and if you check the degrees Saturn is in 7 degree Capricorn and Mars is in 27 degrees so they are like quite uh, far and as we know in the in end of March okay which is one month back Mars and Saturn were exactly conjunct okay so now in one month Mars has traveled around 20 degrees so uh, Saturn is in 7 he's in 27 so they are separating. That's a big sign of relief during this month, of course. And after that, we have Mars from exaltation sign of Capricorn. He is aspecting Sun and Mercury in the sign of Aries. That is very important to note. And then Jupiter has just sneaked into Capricorn, just two degrees. And Jupiter is uh, going to be retrograde again, so he's going to go back into Sagittarius. Okay, so this Jupiter conjunction with Saturn, uh, Jupiter Saturn conjunction is not really going to play out now because uh, after some time Jupiter will be retrograde and he will move back to uh, Sagittarius again. So, you we will not see this Jupiter Saturn conjunction uh, actively during this year. But of course, the next year or end of 2020, Jupiter is moving into Capricorn and Saturn will be there. So therefore, from that time, the conjunction will start. All right. And Mars 
as we all know is moving forward so rahu is in 7 degrees of gemini ardra nakshatra and ketu is in 7 degree of mula nakshatra sagittarius okay so this month is the beginning of the major retrogression period of course mercury had been retrograde in february march but uh, the results of mercury's retrogression the seed see mercury's retrogression is like the seed okay uh, it's like the beginning of the year or sometimes around january february march mercury is retrograde either of these three time you know december january february march mercury will be retrograde always in these four months once at least <clears throat> and then whatever he does we if if you remember that period from 17th february to march 10th when mercury was retrograde uh, you could have seen the houses which mercury had ruled they they had undergone certain changes and certain unexpected events in comparison uh, in comparison to the way you thought it would go okay and now similarly the same things are going to happen when we have the retrogression of venus in the sign of taurus and the retrogression of jupiter and saturn in capricorn and uh, of course jupiter will move back to sagittarius so therefore the houses which uh, jupiter and saturn rules in your horoscope depending on your ascendant you will see that around 10th of may these planets will be kind of stationary okay jupiter and saturn 10th 11th 12th 13th 14th so these five days are very crucial actually of this month okay so keep a note on 10th may to 15th may these months these five days are very crucial because these three are retrograde going to be retrograde so they will be first they will be stationary retrograde or oh, sorry stationary direct which means they are moving forward but they are almost stationary and on these dates they will station almost and then they will be uh, stationary uh, they will be retrograde but still stationary which means their retrogression has started but they are not moving they are not moving actually okay so whatever has to happen regarding these areas like venus jupiter and saturn you will experience in these five days 10th to 15th may okay it's very crucial time and if you check carefully mercury is in uh, bharani nakshatra okay and sun is also in bharani nakshatra so sun represents the focal focal uh, energy and uh, mercury represents the communication you know? so therefore you, you might feel that uh, on these dates especially 10 11 12 13 14 15 these 5 6 days you know 11 to 15 you could feel that uh, the things that you are planning to do are happening but it's happening very slowly because whenever the sun and mercury enters bharani i have seen uh, things happen very slowly because bharani is the nakshatra which is related to uh, slowing down of certain things it's related to traffic jams okay so uh, therefore if uh, they are ruling any of your uh, career houses like 6th house or 10th house like for example jupiter saturn And then you could feel that uh, during this month the career progress is not happening the way you expected. Okay, that that could be one possibility. And of course, eventually uh, this uh, Sun and Mercury will be moving into Kritika Nakshatra, and on fifteenth it will enter Taurus, and then it will be uh, going again further into Rohini Nakshatra also. So let us check the chart for fifteenth May. How does it appear? Well, this is going to be an interesting chart, of course. So fifteenth May, if you check, you will see. Wow, fifteenth May, the sign of Capricorn still has Jupiter in it. Okay, Jupiter has just started the retrogression. Three degrees it is. Then. mars has separated so mars and saturn will be separating you know during this month so you will see that you know, the houses so whenever any planet conjoins saturn during transit uh, the houses which that planet rules not saturn which that planet rules they get halted for some time there is a friction and there is a push and there's a pull and you want to get your agenda through but it's it doesn't happen the way you expect in the speed that you expect okay so it will happen it's not that it will not happen but it will uh, yeah, it will happen uh, with some level of delays and disappointments and setbacks but now because mars and saturn will separate 
so therefore now you we will be able to uh, breathe again as they say <laughs> Okay, and then Mars will be in uh, Shatta Vishya Nakshatra in the sign of Aquarius. And of course, it will be conjoined moon on 15th. So therefore, 15th is a very important day because uh, this, is, this is the first day when uh, after this Mars-Saturn conjunction separates, moon will be joining Mars. Okay, So whenever any transit takes, takes place, you will not see the effect of that transit unless the moon comes and joins it okay so when moon will come and join mars then you will see that now you are actually able to realize the houses which mars rules in your chart because now it has separated from saturn and remember mars was with k2 also okay before in sagittarius so therefore from 15th may you can see there is a there is a huge relief in the areas which mars rules 100% you can check this okay and then mercury will be entering rohini nakshatra and sun would have entered zero degree of taurus okay and venus is of course he is in mrigashira nakshatra in 27 degrees and he is also retrograde that time jupiter saturn venus all three and jupiter is in second pada of uttara shada so regarding jupiter's transit to purva shada i already spoke but now, uh, and I also made a video on Jupiter's transit into Uttara Shada. So therefore, uh, you will be able to now see that the, the houses which Jupiter rules in your chart, regarding those areas, certain things you decided, and now you will actually have the time and energy to work on them and to implement them properly. Okay, That you will notice regarding Jupiter. And because Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto are conjunct, so and Jupiter is in debility, okay, but the debility is getting cancelled because the dispositor of that sign, which is Saturn, is sitting with Jupiter himself there, okay. So Jupiter is getting help from Saturn. So therefore, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is a very good time to uh, practically work on the projects, not to talk of some big lofty ideas and some fancy things, but you will realize the next year especially when these two are conjunct in Capricorn 2021 that there are so many things which you thought uh, in your mind okay you imagine certain things okay maybe if I do this this will happen like that or maybe I'll become happy maybe I'll become miserable but then you will actually see the reality of your life uh, in the next year especially okay and because this retrogression is happening now during this year, which is like almost mid of the year, May. So, therefore, during this time, the you will see the seeds are being sown okay, in Capricorn. And so that will be an effect by the end of this year, of course. And Mercury would have entered Rohini Nakshatra that time. So, therefore, uh, you could see people, they are communicating related to things like uh, beauty or uh anything to do with show showbiz or show off okay because these three are in taurus that time okay this is a very crucial placement so wherever taurus is in your chart you will see a lot of dynamic things happening there and um, depending on your dashas you will also see that um, you 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 could be uh, getting married or you could get into a relationship or these kind of things could happen okay and then let us go to the end of the month, which is 29th May. So if you go to 29th May, ah, very interesting. What is happening here? 29th May, Sun has entered Rohini Nakshatra and Venus has entered Rohini. Okay. And Venus is about to be combust. Okay. He is about to be combust after some time, of course. So in June, Venus will be combust. Okay, because their sun is at 14, Venus is at 22. So it's like one is going ahead, sun and Venus is moving behind, going retrograde. So uh, therefore, around the end of May, this Rohini Nakshatra will be very prominent. Okay, so if if sun or Venus is prominently linked to your Atmakara or moon sign or ascendant, or your ascendant lord is with Venus, or Venus sit, sits in your ascendant or is aspecting, and then you will see you will develop a desire to um, 
to improve your physique or the way you look or you will comment on somebody else's appearance or you know, somebody else might comment on your appearance these kind of things could happen and mars would have entered satavisha nakshatra again as i said before and mercury has entered ardra nakshatra 6 degrees with rahu okay so when mercury and rahu combines you will see that uh, people will love to be very extrovert people will love to communicate and especially it's the sign gemini where mercury which is the uh, sign ruled by mercury himself okay so therefore uh because both are combining in ardra so therefore this is a very good time uh, if you are planning to do some new innovative things you can do some new inventions or you have to publish some paper research paper or some journal or you want to write a book or you want to release something or you want to uh, have some major transformation in your life this is a very good time for that all right so this this month will uh, be the uh, the the seeds will be sown during this month and it will fructify next year okay this is what is my conclusion about this month and of course moon would have um entered leo and that is how the month ends okay so at the end of the month ketu is in uh, sun is in taurus then moon is in leo then mars is in aquarius mercury in gemini jupiter saturn in capricorn and venus is in taurus about to be combust and it is already retrograde and rahu ketu are in 6 degrees of gemini and sagittarius all right so as the month ends gradually the focus will move to uh, i would say aquarius and gemini because that is where most of the energies will start to accumulate later on uh, during this month okay and as june kicks off okay so therefore uh, this month is uh, it's I, it's the beginning of the summer i would say <laughs> of course summer has already started it's very hot now also but uh, it is that uh, it is that time of the year where you will start to see diff- uh, massive changes in your life okay and the results will be seen later on not now now the retrogression has started okay so therefore use this period properly and make good decisions and reap the benefits of your activities later on okay and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding this month then you can always uh, go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him